Hey everyone, how's it going? So, I thought I'd make this video to talk about the balance problems that I think are kind of rampant in the game. Now, I will say, I'm not saying that the entire game is like horribly unbalanced, the game's completely broken, anything like that. But what I am saying is I think there's a fundamental flaw in how Smilegate goes about balancing their game. And I think that a lot of us might be able to relate to this. They release characters, the character is either usually broken or bad. There's not too much in between, sometimes they hit the mark perfectly. You have characters like Lethe and Summer Luluka recently, I think they're very well designed. But then you have characters like Emma Landy, you have characters like Lua, pre-nerf Hua Young, etc. And sometimes they're just completely off the mark. And sometimes we suffer with these characters for a really long time. We see Emma Lilius, we see Lua, we see Angel of Light. We see these characters constantly play games over and over and over. They get banned constantly, and when they don't get banned, they run rampant. In the World Cup recently, we saw Lua permanently banned almost every single time, and the only times that she actually got into a match, she automatically won. So it clearly is not really all that balanced, it feels, but how do they solve that? So one way is you nerf the characters, and that's going to make some people very unhappy because they have them, even if they give refunds and stuff like that, and it'll make other people happy. So that would be something you'd have to rip the bandaid off. Another possible way is that you just buff everybody else. That makes it so that it's a more even playing field, you don't have to actually nerf anybody. So that's another way to possibly balance, and I guess a third way would be to release counters to these powerful units to kind of bring down their power and more equalize things and add more diversity to the game. I would say that's those are kind of the three major ways that people balance games. Um, and so I want to talk about the balance patches that we've seen a lot coming out of Smallgate and why I think that they're not very good and I really want them to improve it. So. I opened up every single balance patch that happened for the past year, an entire year. So keep in mind there's only a balance patch every two months, so that's only six total balance patches that they've released. That's not really that much. They've done a little bit of tweaking of stuff in between, not on a full balance patch, but other than that, uh, there's only been six major balance patches in an entire year. That's not that many, but if you buff a lot of things, it could possibly be very impactful and change the game a lot. Well, let's take a look at them. So this one was approximately a year ago, in August. So this is the buff where they made it so Faithless Lilica was a lot better, where she didn't have to rely as much on always having to crit people. This is where they buffed Senya to make her a lot more useful. And well, that's about it. They did buff Arrowell, but keep in mind this was before they gave her the specialty change. So they were basically doing it in preparation. So I guess you could maybe count that, but I, I don't think that really counts because that was before her especially changed. And they also buffed Double Edge to Crescent and Alensa Nox's Wrath. So here's what I'll say. I think out of these changes, Faithless Lydica and Senya are the only real major ones. Haughty Fiend was kind of whatever. Ervalin, they actually re later reverted, I believe, in this one. Yep. They uh, changed how that buff was going to work because people were upset. Buana, Rickerus, Yuner Young, Arrowell, kind of whatever. Alensa Nox's Wrath. It's okay on a Let's See, but that's about it. Double Edge to Crescent. It's good on uh, current day k -Ron, but this is before his change, keep in mind. And it was decent on Remnant Violet. That's about it. So, two months of wait time, essentially two characters. Not that great. Then they reverted the Ervalin thing. Then, uh, the Full Metal Alchemist collab came out, and Edward was kind of crappy. He was kind of lacking, so they buffed him. Um, I'm not exactly going to count that, because he needed it just from the start. Uh, he wasn't that great. So, this is the next balance change. Strays. This made it so he could kill a little bit easier with his S3. But not really that impactful, not that huge of a deal, to be honest. This is where they made it so k will always counter in an AoE, which was a really good change, and we saw a lot of usage of him overall. Arya's change, it realistically didn't really do anything. They just made her do a little bit more damage, and I think they made her barrier a little bit bigger. And that's kind of about it. I think higher chance to land debuffs on her S1 when it was in her turn. Rwana, they gave her a shield, um, and then they buffed Magic or Friends barely, just to make it so it wouldn't proc when she dies the first time, and Unfading Memories, which you don't really see. So all in all from this change, the only real impactful buffs that I think made a serious difference, I would say it would be K-Ron, but I think that's it. 
the Arya change didn't really change too much. The Rwanda change didn't really change too much. The Strays change. The, these three changes, basically, they made them a little bit better at what they already do well. But that doesn't really change the meta. That doesn't really change their usage. They're basically the same. It's just they're a little bit better at what they already did. Not that much of a difference, really. Um, this is the Hua Young nerf. This happened, uh, wow, in October, it looks like. So, um, it was after the World Cup and everything, and then they nerfed Hua Young. Completely gutted her, right? If they did way more balance changes over time, I think that maybe we wouldn't have seen such a giant gutting of a character. She needed a nerf, but this was, like, pretty insane, right? And they definitely could, uh, buff her up to be a little bit better, for sure, nowadays. Um, but yeah, Hua Young got gutted. And in that same balance patch, Remnavai got a buff, he became a lot better. It was a pretty good buff for him. Top model Luka got a pretty significant buff at the time. Keep in mind that they also had the uh, extra 7 speed for mages, either this season or the one right after. Pirate Captain Flan got a really big buff. Zahak got a nice buff where he uh, was able to push an ally and himself up and he got the extra turn. So it made it so he's very threatening with the attack buff into S3. Uh, and then the others don't really matter too much. Alabastron doesn't really matter chatty became better so i'll give this balance patch uh, a grade I'll, I'll give it an a i think this is actually compared to other balance patches this is a really good one one great change here another great change here overall another great change over here another good change Vildred's change uh i actually don't remember it exactly oh yeah just a little bit more damage not that big of a difference but all in all um they actually hit a few characters that really needed changes they buffed them up they made them a lot more significant in the game and you actually see some of them to this day so i think they did a good job with that um and it's the same balance patch where they nerfed Huayang, so you saw a lot of possibilities open up and you saw a lot more characters actually being used um this is also where they add protection set and torrent set you know, you see a little bit of them, but not the biggest deal. But, uh, you know, that, that's separate from a balance change. Then in December, let's see what they did. Um, Dark Corvus got his change. I think it was overall a decent change. Briar Witch Asiri got a change. It was huge. You still see a lot of Briar Witch Asiri to this day, making it so that people just can't revive when she's on the field, increasing her hit chance, making her S1 do more damage. Really good change overall. Astromancer Elena, turning her from a literally completely useless character to a very good Guild War and Arena character. Not the best in RTA, but, you know... A long-awaited Sez buff that did absolutely nothing for his usage. Euphine starting to get used a bunch with Zeo. You don't see it as much right now. Um, Selene's change, actually beneficial as well. I would say, uh, overall, this was a pretty good balance patch. Um, these three characters got pretty nice buffs. Euphine actually came into the limelight. Uh, Selene was a little bit better. So it made it so that these characters actually had some usage. You see a little bit less of some of these now. But overall, pretty solid. Um, Celestine... Not that much of a change. Simsar Purby has got a big change. You don't see a ton of people use it, but it's an alright artifact right now, I would say. And then you see um, these changes, which didn't really do anything. So overall, I would say it's a solid balance patch for uh, Spellgate. I think they did a not too bad job with that one. Then we see after Death Dealer Ray's release, he was terrible. So they immediately buffed him before his banner went away. And I would say it was a pretty damn good buff. And I think they did a really good job. I really liked how Smilegate approached it. You release a not so great character. Everyone puts their feedback in that he's pretty garbage. And then you buff the character to a much more playable level. And people go, okay, wow, great. Um, that, that's perfect. Before the banner goes away too. Very smart way to do it. I want to see a lot more of that. Because with Astromancer Elena and the previous one, they only buffed her after her banner went away. Which everyone was like, well, what the hell? And so I'm supposed to pull for characters even when they're trash. Just hoping that you make them good. So I think that the Death to the Ray change, that was really great. And I wanted to see a lot more of that. But Smoggy rarely does this nowadays overall. Except for another case that we'll see later on. So... And in February, um, one of the most tone-deaf changes ever in Epic 7 is nerfing Crimson Seed and Time Sanker. Literally, who asked? Um, a lot of people say, like, oh, it was because Apocalypse Ravi was too strong. Yeah, well, the most used artifact on Apocalypse Ravi was not Crimson Seed. It was actually Proof of Valor. And so why did you nerf this? Like, was this really the issue? I, I don't really understand. Very tone-deaf uh, nerf there. And hey, if they buffed and nerfed stuff more often like this, I would be fine. But it's the fact they went out of their way to do it. Everyone was like, well, what the hell are you doing? Like, why, why would you do this? Right? So that was a very strange choice by them. Then we see in February the actual main balance patch. Ambitious Taiwan, huge buff overall. Made him a lot better. You see him a lot more now. 
Um, I actually forget exactly what they did, but, uh, oh yeah, ignoring effect resist and, uh, yeah, decreasing defense instead of speed. Yeah, pretty big change. Um, Melissa, wow, cool buff. She's only had 10. You say Fairy Tail Tenebra, Mui, and then Chaos Sect X, Guide to a Decision, Wall of Order. I would say this is a pretty bad balance patch, a really, really bad one. I would say one character. One character really got a significant change. You could argue Fairy Tail Tenebra got an okay one, but... Who do you really see used? Kisei got a tiny, tiny change, and it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, didn't increase her usage or anything. She's basically the same. And this guy's never used. Chaos Sec, uh, Chaos Sec Dax, Church of Illyros Axe, that, that guy, he's gone. Um, so basically, one change. Two months, one character got a good change after two months. And maybe a couple character releases, like a couple RGBs and an ML5, and that's basically all you got in two months. That's a long period of time and not really anything happened kind of a disappointment and we see two months later this is where architect Leica was uh really bad and then she got buffed before her banner went away honestly uh kind of wish they didn't buff her because she's a pretty frustrating unit but you know get over my personal bias um great idea for them to buff another ml5 that was super underperforming while their banner was still going great job small gate but I hope that they continue to do this kind of thing in the future. They haven't really done anything like this, but it's a great idea to have kind of beta test the character on the server. Everyone says, I don't like this, and then you uh, buff them before they go away. Great idea, Smallgate. Thank you. Then we see two months later, little Queen Shark change. Didn't really do much. Tiny more damage on S3. Spirit Ice Lane change uh, fixed some remain problems because she was bad at what she was supposed to do, essentially, because she could get unlucky. They made her a lot better at what she was supposed to be good against, making her an actual character, though you don't see her used a lot, just a tiny bit. Jacko, huge change. Amazing change for her, making her just the better Euphine, basically. Summer Break Charlotte actually got a good change. It took a while for it to sink in, but actually a pretty decent cleave character. Sharoon change was really, really awesome. You don't see much of Assassin's Creed 2 show, but I guess you could say it's all right for him. Arunka change didn't really do much. Then these three artifacts, you don't really see any of them used that much. I would say this balance patch is okay. You have like two really, uh, I would say three, four really great changes right there overall for the characters. And I guess this is a decent one. I would say it's an all right change. Um, but you still ha always have to think of it in terms of two months go by. And how much does this really change the meta? Well, I'd say in this case, Jacko changed the meta, but maybe sure. I'd say those two characters helped change a little bit of the meta. But some of these bounce patches, you buff the character, and it doesn't really do all that much. And now we look two months later to the most recent balance patch in Epic 7. Royal of Light change. Bad. It was, that was trash. That was garbage change. Uh, didn't fix any of her issues. Lionheart Sermia. Decent change. Uh, I think the CR push was good. Uh, do you see any of these other characters used? No, I tried all the more change. I don't whatever. Rise of Armada, I've seen some people saying that it's actually pretty decent. Maybe that's an alright one. And then, uh, that's about it. And, oh yeah, and then they buffed Restrict, a debuff that didn't really need to be buffed at all. I don't really understand why they did that, especially in a meta that's mostly about all debuffs, so a bit tone deaf there. But so that's all the balance patches of an entire year. That's a whole year. Now, if we're just focusing on the main balance patches, so not like they release a character and then buff them before the banner goes away. Um, if we just count how many total characters got really good changes, I would consider, I would say one, two. Um, not gonna count those. One, two, three, K-Ron there. Uh, four, five, six, seven. That was a big one. 8, 9, 10, 11. I don't think I would count Selene. She's still a little bit awkward. Kind of fulfilled the same purpose. That's 11 so far. 12. I wouldn't really name anybody else there, honestly. Um, 13, 14, 15, 16, I would say. Then 17. So, out of an entire year, about 17 characters got uh, really good, significant changes that I would say influenced the game. Um, where the character actually was possibly able to help change the meta a little bit or saw a lot more usage. 17. That's over the course of an entire year. And a game like Summoner's War that, you know, this game is based off of, they bounce patched like 
30 characters every time they do a bounce patch. And I'm not saying we have to do 30 characters, but what I am saying, pretty much my whole point of this, is what I'm trying to point out is that not many characters getting changed. I think there's like over 270 total characters in E7. That's counting three stars, of course, but there's a lot of characters in this game and only 17 characters are getting significant changes that actually really influence things. That's kind of a shame, right? There's so many characters people want to use that you can't, so many characters that have potential that you can't really use. And so what I'd recommend is Smallgate should either one, do a bounce patch every month, I think that would lower the turnaround time. That would increase a lot more changes. That'd be great. Two, the other option I would say is to just double the amount of characters getting buffed, but I feel like the first option might be a bit better. And what I would also say is I think that what Smallgate should do is when they release these balance patches that hopefully have more characters, I think that they should be more open to changing things a little bit more, a little more wildly, but then add a caveat to them saying, we are going to change these characters, but there's going to be like a two week period where we're going to see how these characters perform, we're going to see what people think, and we might make changes to them, and we will not refund you. So that would basically be, it's like a testing ground, essentially. So then they would do, be able to do more wild changes, they might be able to do more significant stuff, and then they won't just be like, oh crap, we messed up, and then have to nerf and give compensation to everybody. So people can kind of be like, mm, I, I think I'll try this out, but they don't want to invest too much. Maybe they use their grace of growth to try some of these characters out. The characters that seem like really insane that they buff, right? I don't know. I just think something along those lines would be a lot better. Um, at the very least, just do more balance patches or make the balance patches bigger. Because I really think, since Smallgate essentially refuses to nerf characters, um, other than Hua Young, who kind of was just killing everything. Since they refuse to do that, there needs to be some other middle ground. They need to do something else because some of these balance patches, let's be real, they're lazy as hell. Some of these balance patches like this one, you could actually come up with this in like a couple of hours. No joke, like literally like two hours or something. And it, it's a two month wait period for such a lackluster, pathetic patch. Some of these other patches are the same, just like almost nothing changes, like really? Um, like, it's as though they don't even know what Royal's problem at all is. Like, it's that she's too slow, her cooldowns are too long, she can't deal with debuffs, uh, like, she just doesn't work against the current meta stuff, and they just give her a measly CR push. Like, you really think that's gonna fix things? So, they're very tone-deaf on some of these changes, and then also, they do so few, it's just, it's such a shame. And I really think that this is one of the biggest problems with Epic 7, where if they just did more of these, I think it would fix a lot of the issues. It would really spice things up, make things more interesting. We see that sometimes they change Frenzy, but the recent Frenzies kind of sucked, and they've gotten really lazy with the Frenzies as well. I would like to see more interesting changes happen. You don't have to change everything. You don't have to make every season completely insane, like, oh, this is the debuff season, this is the cleave season, this is the standard season. You don't have to do that. But when you buff tons of characters, it just makes the game so much more interesting. Characters that were outdated, characters people liked but never felt like they could use, suddenly they become viable or interesting. People are trying all sorts of stuff out, and sometimes it takes a while for the meta to actually shake up and people understand it. So people, all this wild stuff's happening and people are having fun trying things out, and it really just opens up everything in the game, I think. I would consider balance patches to be more exciting than releasing new units most of the time. And I really hope that Smallgate can start doing something like this, start going a more proactive approach with them. Anyways, I kind of just wanted to talk about all this because this is something that I've been thinking for a long, long, long time. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, what do you think are some good ideas for Smallgate to approach this whole balance problem with the game? And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you like the video or subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys next time.